PhD program at Cape Cod University in 2007, and is currently a researcher at the Rice Gene Discovery National Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, Thailand. Her research focuses on drought tolerance of rice, and particularly rain-fed lowland varieties. Please welcome Dr. Juna Junaisa Singh Lee. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to present to you our work on drought resistance and salinity tolerance screening using um, chromosome substitution population of KDML 105. Actually, um, Dr. Waiput Kanju, he's the one who developed the CSSL population. So a brief introduction. So just want to introduce you to the situation in Thailand. So here you will see um, the areas that are actually irrigated and you will see the green ones that are actually rain fed. So this part, we call this the northeast part of Thailand. Um, farming here depends on rain and this is um, normally affected by drought. So you will see the orange part here. So this portion, um, especially the central part of northeast is mainly um, uh, affected by drought. And in this area as well, the famous KDML-105 is uh, produced. The, the very aromatic KDML-105 is produced. So it's a big problem actually in uh, the production of KDML-105 in this area. Uh, we're, we're in uh, drought stress or salinity stress uh, are occurring in this place. So here you will see here the monthly pattern of the rainfall. So in the Northeast, most of the farmers are actually sowing their seeds in the month of April, wherein the amount of water is uh, very, at that time they are, they are waiting for the first rain actually to come, and then the farmers uh, start sowing the seeds. So there are times that there are problems with drought and even salinity at this time, at, at seedling stage. So the peak of the rain in, in this area is actually in August and September, and at this stage the, the plants are at tillering or the late uh, yeah, the, at maximum tillering or at late tillering stage. And normally, KDML 105 flowers in October, and then it's, it is harvested in November or early December. So, in terms of um, uh, reproductive stage drought stress, uh, normally farmers encounter problems here in October. So, there are times that there is not enough rain for the plants during the flowering time. And here you will see here the pattern of rainfall. So. In the northeast, so the rainfall, the rain um, uh, amount range from 800 to 2,400 millimeter. Uh, yeah. So here in the central area of the uh, northeast, as I mentioned, this is the critical part, and also in this part of the Nakhon Ratchasima is where uh, salinity stress is very high. So in terms of salinity, actually in the whole country, it's 3.43 million hectares which is affected by this uh, stress. So in the part of the north, is, it comprised um, nearly 70%. And th that area is actually 30, uh, the source of 36% of the production uh, of rice, specifically cow dog mali in Thailand. So when we prepared or we developed the CSSL population, it is really intended to uh, dissect the drought resistance traits. So originally, the QTL for drought resistance were mapped uh, using the doubled haploid population, which were derived from the cross between CT993, which is an haploid rice, it has good root system, and then it was crossed with IR62266. This one is a uh, lowland variety and it has good as uh, osmotic adjustment ability. So the traits that were um, screened at that time were agronomic traits and also physiological traits which include um, leaf water potential and then root traits as well. So after the QTL mapping, we found out that the QTL for several traits are class, clustered in specific uh, regions of the chromosome. As you can see from here, 
Um, several traits for agronomic traits are clustering in chromosome 1, also in chromosome 3. And you will find some root traits here in chromosome 4 and also in chromosome 8. And um, some um, agronomic traits in chromosome 9. So it, it made our uh, work very difficult because it's too difficult for us to know which one will really be working when we develop, uh, if we want to develop KDML105 to be resistant to doubt stress. And also, you will see here the cluster of the uh, QTL linked in repulsion. So here you will see the red QTLs, the red traits, or the QTLs for these traits, these are actually uh, QTLs which has the allele coming from CT993 and the blue ones coming from the IR62266. So here in this example in chromosome 1, uh, grain yield, yield components are all from IR62266 and the rest of the physiological traits, root traits are from CT993. So once if we, cho if we choose CT993, then we will go into lo lose the, the IR alleles. And then we found this is the same in all five chromosomes. Excuse me, can I go back in this one? So finally, we actually selected five regions, chromosome 1, 3, 4, 8, and 9. And then uh, this, with this kind of repulsion, we found this in all um, five chromosomes, five regions actually. But then at the end, we decided to choose the CT allele. And then we, um, because of we compared our study with our uh, different studies, and it seems that because the CT993 IR62 population was also used in different countries, like in Israel, in India, and in the U.S., so we compare our study and we found the same thing. So we it made us confident that that region is really related with drought resistance, and so we go on with our uh, integration. So. Here we use KDML105 as our uh, female parent, so it's aromatic, good, good cooking, eating quality, but it, uh, it is moderately susceptible to drought, to drought stress. And we use two doubled haploids uh, as, as donor of uh, drought resistance. So they are non-aromatic, the cooking, eating quality is not good, but they have the drought resistance. So this is the breeding scheme. So we started the crossing since 2003, and from that time, 2006, we developed the Bacross 3, Bacross 4, by using by by marker-assisted backcrossing, and we just use we ju we use just um, three microsatellite markers to follow up the region of the uh, the QTL. And from then on, we, we backers again, and we had backers five, and we keep on adding microsatellite markers. So in the selfing generation, when we started at backers 5F2, we worked on uh, 2,500 plants, more than 2,500 plants, and then we add as much as we can uh, the number of the microsatellite markers. So here you will see here the, the number of markers that we added in the region of the QTL. Actually, we got a problem here because uh, we, we, we ran out of polymorphic microsatellite markers for us to dissect the region and to have the small segment of the, the QTL. And aside from uh, following up the, 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 the region of the QTL, we also we did the genome scan using 131 markers from chromosome 1 to chromosome 12, just to be sure that there, uh, of, uh, you will see from here. So this is actually the, the CSS lines that we developed. So going this way, the vertical, that, that represents the line, and the horizontal actually represents the marker. So this is chromosome 1, chromosome 3, 4, 8, and 9. So these are the lines from uh, that has the chromosome 1 region. So you will see from here that we were not able to develop the small segment uh, ladder type uh, CSSL because we lack the polymorphic microsatellite markers during the time with, that we are developing this and we don't have yet the capacity that time to increase the, the markers using SNP. So, 
um, after we obtained the BC5F4, we used this population to screen uh, under drought stress. So we have a good um, partner in, with our rice department, and we put this population in Chumper Rice Research Center in 2009. So we have um, uh, control and drought stress conditions at that time. And then uh, for the stress condition, the water from the field was drained out 10 days before the panicle initiation. So we also measured yield, yield components, flowering time, and flowering time. So these are just uh, some of the pictures that we had for the CSSL. So s many lines actually show uh, um, um, leaf rolling and some with the, the white spikelets. Panicles. And this is actually uh, um, the result for the flowering. So KDML flowered two days this is under the, the drought stress. So KDML flowered two days earlier uh, than when compared with the irrigated uh, condition. So the delay was, fu was found between one to four days, but most of the lines actually are just within one, one, two days delay. So it's not really that significant because even at the irrigated condition, the flowering is very similar among the CSSLs. And then we found that there are some lines here that are actually uh, flowering earlier than KDML 105. So this is a good indication that if you're going to put these materials into a kind of um, intensive phenotyping, uh, we will not be uh, worried about the, the stage. That if, say, we, we want to screen the population at reproductive stage, so we, we are very sure that all the lines will be stressed at the same stage of development. And this is another uh, part of the result for the total spikelet number. So here we can see that um, the, the donor has the high, has higher number of spikelet compared with KDML 105. So here uh, at irrigated condition, uh, we notice that uh, the lines which has the drought resistance QTL has higher spikelet number compared with the other uh, CSS lines containing the other uh, QTL region. And the same thing was also observed under drought stress here. So we took these lines here, and then we found out that there are at least uh, six lines that has higher number of spikelets compared with KDML here. And it is now, it makes us interested on how to find out in our um, CSS, CSS line the, the gene which is actually controlling uh, the total spikelet number because we have the line ready for us to work on. And this is uh, the result for grain yield. So we can see for he, uh, from this uh, slide, so KDML is here, and we found that there are lines, CSS lines, which has grain yield higher than KDML 105. Uh, in this case, uh, CSS lines that has the chromosome 8 QTL segment had a higher uh, grain yield compared with other CSS lines containing the other QTL segment. So after doing the, Q, uh, the phenotyping, we remap the QTL um, in the CSS population. So surprisingly, we found out that it's not only now the donor which contributes to the uh, resistance, but KDML itself also contributes. So, but here, the black ones here are actually coming from the donor. So this one, actually, we already published this year uh, in Rice Science. So to compare the, to compare the, um, 
the results that we have used uh, for salinity tolerance screening. So we used the same population and we did the screening at Rice Gene Discovery in 2011. But at, that, at this moment, we have a good screening uh, capacity only at seedling stage. So the plants were screened uh, by applying 150 millimolar salinized solution. And then uh, the, the materials were scored with salt injury score at 10, 16, and 21 days after treatment. So here you will see here, um, the double haploids, the donors are here at 10 days after treatment and KDML is here. And as the treatment goes on, the days goes on, so there is a big difference between the double haploid and uh, the KDML 105. So the, the double haploid, uh, the donors, actually themselves have the, um, has moderate resistance or tolerance under salinity. And here, if we will look at here, so KDML is here, which is very susceptible to, to salinity stress. And we have few lines here that are very, very good under salinity stress. So this is an example or the picture of what we had in the 10 days and 16 days after treatment. So you will see here the green ones that are still surviving, which are actually these lines here. So this has been published um, actually in a local journal, journal here in Thailand as well. So originally we have work here in uh, Rice Gene Discovery on the salinity tolerance as well uh, using the KDML 105 and the FL530 cross and the, the guy who's working on this population was able to map salt injury score in chromosome 1, in chromosome 3 and in chromosome 9. So using this as a reference we also map back the salinity tolerance or the salt injury uh, score to the, to the population, to the CSS population. So here we can compare here, so the yellow ones are actually from the drought uh, uh, traits and the blue one for the salinity traits and the, they are actually lying side by side. Uh, you, we can find in chromosome 1, a small region here in chromosome 3, in chromosome 8, and in chromosome 9. So we are now, um, to summarize, so we have six CSS lines which show drought resistance and salinity tolerance, and we are planning to put this in the uh, target location screening. And then the, the regions that are actually associated with the, uh, the QTL for salinity tolerance and drought resistance will be investigated for further to, to, look, to look on the mechanisms for both uh, stresses and then, and then later on to identify genes that control both uh, traits. So we are very much um, interested with this one, but as I said, the screening that we've done for cell tolerance is for seedling stage, which at this moment I can say that uh, they might be different, but although, but although they are lying in the same region. So with this I would like to um, thank Biotech for uh, the funds and Kasetsart University and also to Chumperai Research Center. Thank you. We have time for one or two questions. So I have one. <laughs> All one. Hey. Hey, Afi. I do. What to synthesize? What percentage? What percentage of the KDML quality? Uh, the quality retail. of KDML? So we had five back crosses, and then when we check back the 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 background genome, we were able to re uh, recover 96%, uh, including the, the, the quality, aroma, amylose content, gelatinization temperature, 
all are maintained in the CSSL population. So, help me. Uh, you, you, the group first map those QTL for drought and salinity, maybe. Once you move those fragments to jasmine background, how much knowledge you gain from doing that? With considering a lot of work you have done. So what kind of knowledge, new knowledge you gain by doing so? As, as I mentioned, so um, we found out that there, the, 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 the QTL controlling those traits are actually lying side by side in the, in the, in, uh, in the same region. So we are now interested on uh, doing more phenotyping for the mechanisms avoid um, drought avoidance, drought tolerance, and additional um, uh, phenotyping for salinity for us to to pinpoint which among those uh, mechanisms are really uh, working and if uh, a particular gene could be um, I mean involved in the expression of both traits or if totally different gene are are involved to express the, the tolerance just, just continue did you get a better resolution as of that? now actually we are planning to do more genotyping okay. thank you uh, with yeah. that please give a big hand to uh, Lisa.